Hello, this is Solar Business TV from Solar Power International 2018 uh, from Anaheim. Uh, we just came here from uh, Beverly Hills and one of our guests, you know, who was uh, at our table was uh, Doruk Ozulu. So, merhaba Doruk. Merhaba. How did you enjoy, you know, the party in Beverly Hills? It was amazing. First of all, the environment, the people, um, the members, potential members coming in. I think we're all interested about the the uh, the, the the strategy and then the uh, the plans coming forward with the Solar Business Club. So I think it was a very uh, important event as a start for the North America, and um, and the food was really good um, and the, 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 uh, the, the wine was the wine. amazing. The wine, the wine, and uh, all kinds of uh, food. And the California wine, I think, is really good. So you did a really good job. I really enjoyed it, and I'm looking forward to the upcoming meetings. So uh, you were saying that um, before you were bringing solar to Turkey, yes, and since a couple of years you are now in Canada, yes. That's, right. That's why uh, you are here at Ana uh, in Anaheim right. at SPI. So uh, can you tell me, you know, what was your motivation, and how would you compare Turkey uh, with uh, Canadian market? I think Canada market has been uh, one of the pioneers in the world for the solar market because in the eastern part of Canada, Ontario government has uh, started subsidizing the, uh, the solar around 10 years ago where there was no solar market at all in the whole world. So that uh, actually helped Canada or Canadian companies like uh, contractors, EPCs, designers, engineers to gain a lot of know-how. Mm -hmm. And right now, um, with the, the Canadian uh, sense of uh, solar business is not only uh, constrained to the Canadian market, but mm -hmm. the Canadian companies are active outside of Canada as well, like US, Caribbean, Latin America, mm -hmm. even Europe. So they are very, uh, like they're looking around, spreading, like because they have a lot of know-how, mm -hmm. they can use it, leverage it for, for other countries as well. So that's something Canada has, mm -hmm. as compared to Turkey. And Turkey um, is a little later, like they, the, the Turkey has entered the game a little later than Canada, let's say maybe five years with a delay, because of the uh, legislation, uh, the structure was being formed, being shaped with the, the, the government and then lots of uh, people joining the, 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 the making. So it took a while, but right now the established capacity in Turkey mm -hmm. and Canada is almost equal. So oh. Turkey kind of caught up with Canada in terms of the capacity. So both countries have around 3 gigawatts of solar capacity. And I don't know how it will go forward, but most likely... No, you know, because actually we discussed, yeah, 10 years everything will be solar. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's pretty much it, and uh, there are ways to increase the deployment of solar. One is just adding up capacity, mm -hmm. the other one is like replacing thermal or uh, fossil fuel plants, or even maybe depending on the situation, nuclear, like the, the obsolete ones especially, can be replaced with solar. So still maintaining a, a, a supply for the, the, the population and the industry, which will help both countries uh, operate well. And how do you see you know, the, the next uh, wave? Uh, what will be the drivers and what is the attitude of society? I think the, the people working in the solar market in, in the solar industry in, in eastern Ontario are a little bit uh, uh, sad that the, the current government uh, stopped the uh, fit and tariff program mm -hmm. for the solar uh, projects but nevertheless it's I think uh, still there is going to be a market because of the uh, know-how that the uh, the, the solar companies have generated, the costs going down, the storage is coming as well because it's a good solution for uh, a market where the electricity price is really high such as in Ontario because they have this global adjustment price that's added on top of the, uh, the electricity pricing. So whenever there's a peak they have to pay more but with the battery storage solutions they don't have to do that they just pay money for the batteries maybe they can finance with some certain financial instruments with the banks and still good for the people so um, I think there's a lot of potential right now with the, uh, with the battery storage technology and some other technologies like energy IOT or um, uh, the virtual net metering so there are many instruments it's not like 10 years ago it's not just you put your solar panels on your rooftop and wait and yeah, try to sell electricity to get that was the old uh, let's say mindset but now 
we are looking forward to have like using artificial intelligence, energy, IoT, like make things much more uh, like complicated, sophisticated. So there's a huge potential. Hopefully starting from next year we'll be seeing more large scale utility projects which won't rely on, hopefully not rely on the feed-in tariffs but more like um, offtake agreements because the costs are going down. Like a private PPA? Private PPAs, like we call it, uh, yeah, the corporate corporations are interested to take off offtake electricity and to have a stable electricity price rather than just you know, what if the price will go up or down over the next 20 years? No one wants that. They want to control their risks with the, the, the having a stable electricity price. And what about, uh, you see, because now let's switch uh, from the market to uh, human to human. Yes, so you understood that uh, in Solar Business Club, very important is human to human. Yes, because solar is not B2B, B2C, but H to H. And if you compare, you know, like a way of making business in Turkey, uh, to Canada and what would be your advice how we should you know create this uh, network of reliable uh, industry leaders in uh, Canada I think uh, being international is key um, because this is a like, amazing pool of experience people are uh, contributing to the industry but it shouldn't be limited to a country everyone has their own local experiences gained over time so once we start to get connected in a global fashion then we'll have a better chance to, to uh, maybe speed up or stretch out the, uh, the employment or improvement of the, the solar industry overall so we need uh, clubs or solar business clubs like you guys so it's very important uh, to connect not only the, uh, the, the PV industry stakeholders but also the, the neighboring everybody sectors, around yeah? everybody around uh, right? do you still remember what is our you know like a, a flagship sign thumbs up for solar Teşekkürler. 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 Uh, that was solar business TV uh, from Anaheim uh, together with uh, Doruk Ozulu uh, who is uh, you know Turkish guy but since couple of years uh, fighting for solar in Canada thank you so much thanks for watching thank you